Hello and welcome to episode 212 of First Geek 411. I'm your host, Cameron Franklin, and with me as always from the Great White North, Shanine. How are you doing today? Uh, doing good. Melting a little bit, but it's mm. hot. I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> Over on West Coast, Best Coast, Emma, how are you doing? Melting more than just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Roasty, toasty day out there today, uh, but I can't complain. Just doing what I love. And then looking at something very confused from Big Sky Country, Chris Nicolay, how are you doing? Hello, I'm I'm toasty too, but it's been it's been nice. <laughs> we had a f- first fire started, so oh no, we'll see. I think they got it contained maybe i don't know i don't know what they do this week um, we're here to talk to you about the avengers initiative and we'll be ranking all six films in the first phase of the mcu as we begin our indeterminate time period um looking at the theme of marvel and so um, last week we had our thor 11 thunder spoiler cast I'm raising my hands here so that I'll see it in the preview later on. Um, And yeah, over the next um, handful of episodes, we're going to be taking a look at a different phase every week. Um, But before we get into that, as always, you can find us on our social media as 1Geek411. You can join our Discord server or shoot us an email at 1stgeek411 at gmail.com if you want to chat between shows. You can also join us on Twitch Monday nights, 645 Mountain Time. Be part of the post-show chats and then check out the videos over on YouTube where you can like, comment, and subscribe. You can also head over to our Redbubble store where you can check out our merch shop. Before we get into our tier list for this week, what all have we been up to? Janine, why don't you kick us off? Um, What have I been up to? Uh, We played some D&D last night. did not wildly attack anything. Um, it's always good. Only reasonably attacked things. We didn't attack a single thing. Huh. We um, we went into a town and they were like, help us. And we're like, okay, we'll scope this out tonight. And then we did. And then we we're like, okay, see ya. <laughs> see ya. Apparently it is a countrywide problem. So we are going to hopefully get some more info before um, possibly dying. Seems fair. So what is this character willing to do for a crossbow? Yeah. (laughs) Um, Safira will not join a rebellion. She will start her own. Mm. So so join my rebellion. We have crossbows. Yes. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> is, is is what I hear. No. Correct. <laughs> this character already has crossbows. And, yeah. It's her recruitment uh, tactic. Looking for rebels. No, we're not into ranged attacks. We are we are swords all the way. My spiritual weapon is just a giant sword. Um, nice. Yeah. Very nice. Emma, what have you been up to? Work. I was on a film set last week for part of the week, which was great. Got to actually work on stuff. I also played D&D last night, and we may have royally screwed ourselves oh, no. to uh, put it nicely. We don't know. Our DM had to end the uh, the session short because we did the thing we were not supposed to do and he had nothing planned for it and we were basically level 6 characters going into a level 15 event so we may all be dead next session we may not we'll see but uh yeah that's been the uh, event of the week um I got to go to the Warner Brothers back lot for filming today, so I got to see the set of The Good Place, and that was cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's about that. Nice. Awesome. 
Chris, what about you? Since last week, I slept a lot. Still, in, I'm still a little bit in recovery mode. Um, except the Understars was this weekend, so that was cool. Um, finished the story for Horizon Forbidden West, finally. Nice. I started watching Umbrella Academy. The new season yes, or the beginning? new season. Okay. And what else? Not caught up on Stranger Things. Awesome. That's about it. Okay. Now to get caught up on anime. That's, that's the next project. Speaking of anime, this week I watched this really good anime, and I don't know if y'all heard of it, but it's called My Hero Academia. Hey. <laughs> and <laughs> um, but seriously, we we did start watching season four of My Hero. Um, really excited. Like super far behind. Like there's two seasons out. Um, like four and five and so we're catching up on that loving it i always forget how much i love that world um and like getting back into it's been super cool uh, this um, season's already started off pretty intense and so i'm pretty excited about wherever it's gonna go i'm i'm it's building up to something that i anticipate will make me cry and so here we are um so we'll see we'll see if it goes where i'm expecting and then this week also beat guardians of the galaxy um it was a game um the beginning and end were both pretty good um the middle like third of it was definitely a slog but we made it through i like that i liked where it ended um it just took us a bit to get there um and then on saturday i ran a one shot of D D um that emma played in as well yeah. and then that's avoided... also a thing that happened <laughs> very um, fun Avoided Ice joined us as well as my friend Rachel. It's her first time playing D&D. And so we had, um, I believe, a ton of fun. And now, man, I'm I'm ready to play more D&D. And so um, I'm already like brainstorming campaign ideas with people. So we will see what happens. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, those were the, the big things that I was up to. Um, also started Tales of Arise, and it is the most melodramatic anime I've ever watched. Like, granted, it's a video game, but like, you know, it's the most melodramatic like, anime I've ever like, watched. Did that one get an anime adaptation? Um, I'm sure it did. Um, the anime cutscenes are super good. Um, but man, everyone is like cranked up to 11. Um, not necessarily in a good, good way. <laughs> like, um, but man, it's, it's very melodramatic, um, almost like soap opera -y. And so. Um, but I'm enjoying the combat. We'll I'll definitely be spending some more time with it. And so, um, yeah, that has been my week. Um, you can always let us know over in Discord what you have been up to. But yeah, let's jump into our main topic for this week. And that is ranking MCU phase one, um, the six films. So for some background, um, we will be doing one giant tier list that will hold all of the MCU. Um, we'll be doing it one phase at a time, um, possibly splitting, splitting phase four into multiple chunks because you know, A, it's not all out yet. Um, and then B, we also have all of the TV shows that are that are there. And so, um, but we'll be going through doing all of that. Um, each week we will have one veto each. Um, and when we veto, we can move, push something up or down a tier um, and then like I said, in the end, this will be one giant tier list. So as we go through, we do have to think of not only how is a film within the phase, but how is it within the whole MCU? Um, I anticipate this being a challenge for me. And so, but then uh, let's get into our ranking system. S is it's amazing. It's the type of thing that everyone should watch. Um, I anticipate that also causing some conversations once we get to certain crossovers. Um, <laughs> A's are great, something that most people would see or most people would enjoy. Um, B is good. It has some ups and downs. C is meh. It was a film. Um, and then D is why does this exist? And then should there be a show or movie that only one of us has seen, it will go into the unwatched category um, because at least two of us need to have seen it in order to um, put it onto the tier opinion. list. Yeah. That way it's just not, it's not just one person saying what they think. So 
Darn it. With that. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be anything in this. Um, I'll say I had not seen a movie in this phase until literally today. So that that was my devotion to the to the cause here. To is the that, bit. Is I, that I, I, this, I, I'm guess I, I think I know which one it is too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've talked about it on the cast before. It's that the general case for yeah, most people though. That, there, that there's like... one MCU movie I haven't seen. And so, uh, but yeah, so let's get into it. Kicking it off strong with Iron Man 2008, May 2nd, um, directed by Jon Favreau. And so, um, Emma, why don't you kick us off? Where do you think Iron Man stacks up? Starting it all off strong, in my very humble opinion. Iron Man, S tier, straight up. Like, you cannot go wrong with this movie, in my humble opinion. If, like, I were to recommend any one Marvel movie to, like, anyone and be like, if you're going to ever just watch one, watch Iron Man, it is solid. Like, they knew they had to do well for the very first MCU movie in order for anything to go anywhere. And they absolutely killed it. I love it. I think it's a very strong, great story. Great, granted a lot of it is just our DJ completely just doing his own thing. <laughs> so like, of course it's gonna be good, but overall great 10 out of 10. Would highly recommend for everyone. Chris, what do you think? I mean, I'll, I'll agree. Um, <laughs> that definitely sounded like the voice of someone that agreed. Like, I'm not going to speak of it like that highly. Like, I think it's S tier. I think it is a must watch. I think uh, it is a great start off point for the MCU. Um, and even, and even just the general Iron Man in terms of the Iron Man's mm -hmm. it's, definitely one of the best um so yeah that's tier for me um i think iron man's a um i think it's a type of movie that in its phase i would argue that this is probably one like s tier um but when you compare it against the rest of the mcu um i think it's it's an amazing start and like when we did our t um pixar tier list one of the things that i said about toy story is that i hate putting the first thing as s tier but like i felt like toy story deserved that like i really feel like iron man like laid a very solid framework but i i feel like it's not like the pillar compared to like what toy story is for pixar so a tier for me yeah but then after toy story won the sequels kind of well so, I, mean, I mean, what a trend. I mean, I wonder if we'll see something <laughs> like that happen. Uh, it's an A tier for me as well. It's probably not one of my favorites, but it is really, really good. Um, I mean, you can't go wrong with RDJ. It's just, it's good. It is, it is an interesting thought experiment for where would the MCU be without RDJ? Hey, like, I'm like obviously, it. there's a whole bunch of very talented people that did a whole lot of work um, throughout the MCU and on like Iron Man 1, but man, where would we be without RDJ? And where would he be without Marvel? Yeah, that's like, also... That's, yeah. that's the other thing. I mean, also, I mean, you got to give... It also has Jeff Bridges in it, so I mean automatic points there for me <laughs> mm. can't go wrong with the dude <laughs> <laughs> so then um we're taking a hard swing over to the incredible hulk released just over a month later um on june 13th 2008 i did not realize that they were that close until i was like just now looking at the wiki but um, this is Edward Norton's um, Bruce Banner and Hulk. Um, yeah, Chris, what would you think of this one? This is like D tier. I, <laughs> I mean, it, it, 
like in the context of the MCU, it's just one of those ones. It kind of got grandfather. It's like, oh, we're doing this now. This is a part of it. Um, never mind that the previous Hulk movie was literally what two years before this, and something that, like that. Because that was why I didn't see this in theaters. Yeah, because this was like pretty much a whole new remake. Um, pretty much the same story and everything. I, I just, I'm just like, uh probably shouldn't actually exist like it's that's it's a thing for me uh, for me um this was the only mcu film i had not seen this is the one that i watched today i um i think this commits the cardinal sin of a film which is that it's not terrible so you can't laugh at it it is just there <laughs> and like it blew me away. Like having no, like literally no context for this film other than that there was the the Tony Stark scene at the end. Like that was pretty much all I knew about this. Pretty much didn't need to know anything else about it. Um, it, it blew my mind how different Edward Norton's Bruce Banner was. Like, it's not even like they re just recast the, the role like they did for um, Rhodey. Like this is just a completely different character than what we get in um, with Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. Like, it's just it, like, that kind of shocked me. Like, I just was not anticipating that. And then um, this is, it's, I feel like this isn't even a good Hulk movie. Like, I, no. I feel like this, this is a mediocre Bruce Banner movie. And uh, yeah, I, I just don't really know what, what was going on here. Like, this is D tier for me as well. Um, I, I just, again, I made it this far into the MCU without having seen this, and I feel like you can too. Janine, what do you got? Please be S tier. I just want us to have this huge <laughs> debate over like, Chris and I like bash this film, and then you could, like somebody comes in with a super high opinion. <laughs> I don't think I have a super high opinion of it. Not as low as yours. Um, I haven't seen this movie in like years and years and years so I might not remember all of it that clearly I do remember really enjoying Edward Norton's take on Bruce Banner um and I love Liv Tyler and she was in it mm -hmm. um it definitely is very different from anything else in the MCU so I always forget to include it in MCU things, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I didn't, I didn't hate it that much. And, and I'll agree with you there. I think Edward Norton did a great job with what he was given. I just think what he was given was awful. And like, and I'll say that for honestly, most of the people in this, I like the cast. I think the cast was like good. Just the movie's bad. Like, <laughs> I didn't hate this nearly as much as other things in the MCU. So I'm going to say C tier for me. See, I have to, I basically have the same argument that I made for this film for some ones coming up that are D tier to me. And so that this one had to be D tier so that I could like apply consistent logic. So um, <laughs> Emma, what do you have? It is indeed a movie. Uh. Um, it it sits at a solid C for me because it, it's not a bad movie, but that doesn't mean it's a good movie. It's just a movie flat out. Like, it's definitely, you cannot watch it and be perfectly fine. Like, you, it's very, as has been mentioned, different from everything else in the MCU and is just not, I don't want to say not important, but like- But not important. <laughs> <laughs> not important. Not important. <laughs> um, and it just doesn't like, I didn't even realize, I kind of knew it existed, but I didn't even fully realize that it was part of the MCU until I watched it like two years ago or whatever it is that I watched it for the one time. And I was like, this is actually supposed to be part of the MCU. Like, 
is just forgettable and that's okay it it doesn't need to be remembered so c but it's also not terrible enough to be a d for me mm -hmm. um and so for context there was a 2003 hulk movie and there had been plans for a sequel in 2005 that was canceled yes likely mm -hmm. because of this yeah so mm -hmm. or because of mcu kicking off i remember 2003 one that one was good yeah. um, ironically they did about the same at the box office as iron man no oh, no about the hulk movie oh, okay. about the same <laughs> they both so the 2003 hulk film did 245 million dollars and then the incredible hulk did 264 million dollars so just kind of interesting that they hit like almost the exact thing, exact same thing. Yeah. So. I'm sure the Incredible Hulk movie kind of saw some success because some people thought it was, I'm sure there's a group of people that are like, is this the sequel or what's going on with this? And mm -hmm. then you're like yeah. watching, you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> From there, um, we get our very first sequel in the MCU. Um, we've had three films and and one of them's a sequel and that hey. is iron man 2. um this came out may 7th 2010. so um this is the movie that i feel like a lot of people poop on that i actually think is decent like i'm not over here like trumpeting this is by any means like s class or anything like that but i kind of feel like this movie gets a bad rap um I really like the the shift um, for the new roadie. And I really think that bringing in War Machine this early was super cool. It establishes a lot of the world building without necessarily powering up the world yet. It seemed like they were very reluctant to do that at this point in the MCU. And so basically, like, what is the super rich guy's enemy? Another super rich corporation. Like... <laughs> um and so i really like this i i think it, this is a b for me um it's a low b but um yeah that's where i'm at with it i kind of liked whiplash too i think he's i mean he's forgettable but like <laughs> i like the idea of him so <laughs> janine what about you i'm just i don't remember this one that well <laughs> <laughs> this is the mandarin one right no, no that's iron that's man no. three it's iron man I, three yeah. i will have a oh, whole lot okay. more to say when um, we get to iron man three <laughs> all right i remember very little from iron man two they introduced the black widow yeah, I was going to say, true. this is the one with ScarJo in it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's I, This one deals more with his palladium poisoning, right? Yeah, I think this is where he discovers the new element. Yeah. Or, or his, I guess his dad discovered the element. He figures out how to make it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. For being this unmemorable and not making me want to rewatch it a ton, I'm going to say C. It's fine and it exists. I mean, does it exist for you though? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I remember I remember Natasha. That's about all I remember. So mm -hmm. points points for Natasha. Yeah. Emma, where are you at with this? I am with you, Cameron. It's a low B. It's not terrible, but it feels like a generic superhero movie. Like, in the grand scheme of things. Because you have a things. generic villain. <laughs> yeah, you have a generic you know? villain. Touché. And a super rich guy who's slapped in the face with the realities of life, essentially. It's not great, but it's not terrible it is a little bit unmemorable because it feels a bit like a generic superhero movie um like shanine was was saying so overall a low b um 
B-ish. Chris? I don't give this one a solid B. Um, I think what this one did, Grant, it, it just had a lot of fun character things. And I think in terms of Tony's story, it's kind of important because it does set him, like, it does make you cheer for him despite him going against, like, public opinion at times or, you know, it, it, I always have a hard time cheering for a single person with that much power, but it made me do that. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's because he's actually smart. He's actually thinking about these things for kind of, um, and everyone else is going to fail and put other people at risk, so... Sure, put all the power, give give all one man all the power for now. <laughs> and normally I would be very remiss to do that, but this made me support Tony Stark a little more, so. I want y'all to close your eyes and go on a journey with me. Okay, okay. Iron Man 2. Um, we get this introduction of this super cool assassin famous actress playing her. She does all this cool martial arts, this very interesting backstory. What if I told you the next film that we had, instead of being about that super cool person, was Thor? And another so that, you can, you can, oh yeah, another white guy. You can open your eyes now. Because um, how amazing would it have been if we had a Black Widow movie right here? But alas, here we are. Um, so... Um, so we're on to Thor, released May 6th, 2011. And so our introduction to kind of the bigger themes or the bigger parts of the comics. And so, Shanine, what did you think about this not being Black Widow 2 and I guess about the movie Thor? Since, <laughs> which I feel like I'm downing on the movie Thor. That's not what I'm going for here. I just want to emphasize that this could have been a cool slot for a Black Widow movie. It would have been a great slot for a Black Widow movie. I was not aware of that at the time because Thor was the first MCU movie I saw in theaters. So, um, yeah, this was like my intro to the MCU. So I loved it at the time. Still love it. Um, I don't know. I think the rewatchability has gone slightly down over the years for me, but it still has got like some classic Thor. I am in need of a horse. Some classic Darcy. <laughs> um, it's great. I don't know. Hi, B. Hi, B, low A somewhere in there in the, that general area yep <laughs> emma what do you think thor was also my introduction to the mcu except i was on a plane coming back from spain instead of in the theaters so thor is very near and dear to my heart not just because of that but because he's my favorite thor is my favorite but at the same page as janine's very strong b as much as I love him, as much as he is, he is my boo. Um, <laughs> um, it's a comfort movie, but it's like, it's a little bit above Iron Man 2 in terms of basic superhero-ness, if that makes sense. It's not the best Marvel movie in existence in terms of um origin stories mm -hmm. it's still very like it gives very much spoiled rich kid vibes because that's what it is and it's like oh another one of these kids another one of these guys mm -hmm. spoiled rich kid but make him an asgardian god who has been handed everything his entire life um <laughs> So, strong B. <laughs> mm -hmm. Chris, what about you? For me, Thor is an A-tier movie. 
Um, I I think it definitely is what allowed the most recent Ragnarok and Love and Thunder movies to be what they are. Um, we ignore the second one, but um, oh, we'll talk about it <laughs> eventually. Uh, but I don't know. It 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 introduced to the MCU the obviously bigger the idea of bigger threats um, to earth. Uh, it introduced so many great, uh, side characters like Darcy. Um, and I, I just love, it's one of my favorite humors is just the, the cultural conflicts, um, and trying to like figure that out. And I, I, I think Thor kind of set that up for the rest of the MCU. So, and I think it has excellent rewatchability, but but yeah, I mean, yeah, he's a spoiled rich, but I mean, he's not. Rich. I mean, technically, everyone in Asgard's rich, but for the most part, but the closest just, comparable, you know, uh, you know, his, his entire culture is just, the, <laughs> but uh, social standing, you know, we just, it, I just really enjoy Thor. <laughs> for me, um, great this villains. is this is like a yeah. junk food movie, like. I enjoy watching this movie so much. Yeah. Um, but it's like it's junk food. It's my like, comfort movie. Yeah. It's it's the type of thing that like if we were just ranking phase one, I think that this would rank very highly for me. But um I, I definitely feel like when it comes to the MCU as a whole, like this doesn't really stack up um compared to what we would see, even with later origin stories. Um I definitely as there are um like this is our third of four um, origin stories in phase one, you know, for obvious reasons, because, you know, it's the beginning. But like, um, I really feel like they're starting, like this kind of gets us into that blueprint of this is how we're introducing characters. Um, and I, I do, like I said, like, or like Chris said, I really enjoy the cultural conflicts of this, of Thor's like smashing the, like the another that was everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. kind of is still everywhere. Like, it's definitely like that's like the one thing that's kind of like lived beyond this movie is that one scene because um, it's hilarious. Um, I love the people trying to lift Mjolnir. Yeah. And just like the hey, it's in this crater. We got to go try to lift it. Like, I, I love that scene as well. Um, to me, this is a high B. Um, again, I think this would rank higher if, if we're, I was just thinking phase one, but when it comes to MCU as a whole, like again, it's it's a fun junk food movie, um, but that's kind of where it, it leads us all or leads me. So, that's what my tummy feels like. So, the next number five in Phase One is Captain America: The First Avenger, a uh, First Avenger released released July twenty second, twenty eleven. Emma, what did you think of Mister USA? Mr. USA, very strong movie. Um, solid A for me. Um, very patriotic, very yeah. iconic, both in character and like movie. Looking at the overarching MCU, like it's definitely a go to for a lot of people, I think. Um, but I wouldn't say it quite hits S tier. I can't quite explain why. Um, too much America. It's not yeah, too much America. Yeah, too much America. <laughs> I guess it is just because I'm not super patriotic. Like, <laughs> um, he's the Star Spangled Man with the plan. Yeah. Um, also, I keep forgetting that Sebastian Stan is actually Romanian. And then every now and again, I'll get this video up on my feed of like some fan asking him a question in Romanian. And my mind is completely blown because he understands it. But anyway, that's completely irrelevant. Um, <laughs> yeah. Very strong A. <laughs> Star Spangled Man with a plan. <laughs> Chris, what do you think? Uh, 
this is an A tier as well. Um, I think it's a like a great origin story. Um, and yeah, we get some great characters. It even gives we even, we get more context for Tony because we see his dad. Um, development process. Uh, it you know we we get a great underlying theme for for Captain America in terms of. Agent Carter, um, kind of this un uh, ongoing like feeling of loss for him, um, even like culminating into his final story, uh, and yeah, I, I'd give it a solid A. Also, great act, great just war action sequences. I think mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a fun context for World War Two. Yeah. For me, now I'm kind of in a weird place because I think that this is a better movie than Iron Man. But like, you know, I said Iron Man is an A, so I'm gonna just leave on Captain America, the first Avenger is an A. Um, I think it's a better A than Iron Man and kind of throw in that I disagree with it being an S, but you know, not enough to veto, but here we are. Um, and so I really like this film. Um, I think that this is one of the, I mean, you know, we're five movies in, but like, this is the time that the MCU is starting to feel cohesive. Mm -hmm. Like it's starting to feel like there is a plan. Like Chris referenced, like we see um, Tony Stark's dad. Um, we get to see, or we previously have seen Tony Stark, or um, Captain America's shield in Iron Man 3. Um, like this is really, or Iron Man 2, sorry. Um, when he's building the element, like this is really, the, I think the film that starts to make the MCU feel like one cinematic universe rather than just a bunch of disparate films that happen to be about Marvel characters. Um, and then I like Red Skull as a villain. Um, I like that we get Hydra. Um, I feel like Hydra is an awesome, like beginning antagonist for us to tackle. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think that this is super cool. Um, yeah. We also get the, the start of the, I could do this all day. So. Yeah. All right. This is a very strong a for me as well. I love cap. I think he's just a great superhero um i don't know he has a kindness that not a lot of the other heroes have i think that's why i like the other heroes better <laughs> <laughs> fine they're a little more friendly. relatable we have, so we have cap too <laughs> we have bucky we have evil elrond we have <laughs> evil elrond. A cameo from jenna coleman um, that's right I forgot about that it's just we have Peggy love Peggy um, and if I'm remembering correctly this is the first time we see the Tesseract as well yes I, um, I believe Red Skull goes and gets it at the beginning of the film yeah, yeah so I just couldn't remember if it was like in an end credit scene of any of the other movies or anything, but I don't think so. All right. So the first time we see the Tesseract. So yes, like Cameron was saying, this kind of feels like the beginning of a cohesive MCU. Like this is the first movie that will lead into the next three phases. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's great. Yeah. And confirmed from Wikipedia, this is the first time we, we see. Okay, yeah, I um, thought so. it's, it's as well. And, you know, punching Hitler in the face. So. Yeah. yeah. Can't go wrong with that? Yeah. No. So, closing out phase one, we get Marvel's The Avengers, released May 4th, 2012. Chris, what do you think? You haven't gone first yet. I did. I went first for Iron Man 2. Oh, you did. I'm rotating my view of Zoom. And so that's what's happening. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, it, you know, the, the first Avengers is S tier for me. 
um, big stakes, big, big action sequences. It, I mean, it kind of, it's definitely a must watch for anyone. Like this is <laughs> like, you can't really watch any part of the rest of the MCU without watching the first Avengers in my opinion. But, um, so many great things happen, big battles. And we even like even like further on, like we revisit this movie so many times throughout the rest of the MCU. Um, yeah, it's just a great on like they did like, such a great job balancing um, appearances and everything. And really, I just love all the characters. So good. So for me, um, yeah, this is the easiest S tier. Um, I, I love the first Avengers movie. I think it, as I said, Captain America feels like when they start to hit a cohesive narrative. Um, and then the, this Avengers movie really is the payoff for every other film, you know, except for the incredible Hulk that we're going to pretend like it didn't happen. Um, like Bruce Banner's here, but obviously you don't need to have seen that movie. Um, <laughs> and so I, I really feel like this movie is like, this is when the MCU became the cultural phenomenon to me. Like this is when it became the, you have, you need to see the movies. They're going to all connect up. It'll be like, like this is what growing up. I wanted every superhero movie to be is I wanted it to be this contextual, or like this meta narrative where there's these overall running themes and storylines. And it wasn't just, here's a Spider-Man movie and oh, look, a sequel to that Spider-Man movie. But we're not going to talk about how the Daredevil movie takes place right down the street from this because they're going to never interact. Um, and so like, this is very much where I just wanted um, to see the MCU go. And um, I think it's, again, I think it's an easy S tier. As Chunk says in chat, we also find out what Uncle or what Aunt Robin was doing every summer when she wasn't hanging out with the crew at McLaren's. Um, and that was that she was an agent um, of shield doing work. And so shout out to, to aunt Robin. So. Well, I didn't <laughs> realize shield was a Canadian group. No. <laughs> hey, all are welcome, including Hydra. It turns out, but we'll get into that future spoilers there. Yeah. <laughs> Shanine, what do you think? All right. S tier. This is <laughs> my most watched mcu movie i saw it five times in theater i i can still lip sync along to the whole movie but at one point i could just quote the whole thing from memory i would just like watch the movie in my head at work when i was bored um i just i love it it started my love affair with loki slash tom hiddleston <laughs> um <laughs> and Hawkeye and it's just it's great it's got humor it's got tear-jerking moments it's it's everything I ever could have asked for this this was when I actually like fell in love with Marvel what about you d's here i would never <laughs> <laughs> solid s tier i have so many good memories attached to this movie like it was it was the first movie i marvel movie i saw in theaters and i saw it it was released in theaters and then it like you know was taken out or whatever as the general thing and then they put it back in theaters and that's when i saw it for the like when they put it back in theaters because so many people wanted to see it in theaters again and my mind i went with my high school friends in high school and my mind was completely blown similar to shanine i was just like by that point at that point avengers just set in stone like i am now a superhero person like <laughs> this is my life now guys deal with it um and i just remember seeing it in theaters sitting there just being completely blown and in love with all of it like as has been said 
great, you know, a share of time between all of the characters and the interactions were great. Not to mention some of the camera work is just so beautiful and pretty. <laughs> and I could talk about that forever. I'm thinking of one very specific one where it's like they're all in the ship arguing with this Luffy mm -hmm. staff there and it like does this whole cool upside down thing that's a very much a practical so cool like the avengers really set in stone both my love for the mcu and like is a huge like stepping stone in my journey to like wanting to be a filmmaker and just being like this is something we can do <laughs> <laughs> like I could talk about this movie forever. Very solid S tier. I love it so much. So near and dear to my heart for many reasons, as everyone else has mentioned. But like, that's the big one. It's just me going, I want to do that. Like, that's the thing I want to do, guys. Let me do it. I want to do it. Period. I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> I also want to thoughts out on this. When... Avengers came out, it was the third highest grossing film of all time and is still the ninth highest grossing film of all time. Only uh, surpassed like, <laughs> by its sequels. Um, and Spider-Man. And Spider-Man, um, you know. Um, but yeah, it's like, again, it, it's it's crazy what this did. Um, and like the, the amount of framework that this laid for yeah. uh, MCU going forward. And so... So those are our six films, but I wanted us to have some other stuff. So I'm springing these on y'all. Um, I got three questions for us. And so we'll do, um, we can go quick, um, but these are gonna be just kind of general questions about the phase. And so question one, if you had to watch one movie right now, which one would it be? Um, mine is Easy Avengers. Yeah. Oh, and chat, if you want to play along, go ahead and drop yours in. Oh, as well. which of these movies? <laughs> yes. Which one of, if you had to watch one phase one movie, like we shut down the podcast and you have to go watch it, which one are you watching? It would either be Avengers or Thor. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to go watch Iron Man 2. <laughs> just to be a rebel. I mean, part of it is like I just wanna, I wanna recap. <laughs> like, <laughs> Avengers. He's adopted. <laughs> it's like everything else I've seen so many times. It's Iron Man Two is the one I haven't watched a ton of. Hmm. So I'm gonna go back and see if I remember it as well as I did think I do. Um, who is your favorite villain from phase one of the MCU and why is it Loki? <laughs> Loki, so <laughs> hot. <laughs> He's such a well-established villain. Like his mm -hmm. motives make sense. Like it's not just that he's Tom Hiddleston and he's attractive. Like his but behavior, it helps. It helps, <laughs> yes. But his behavior and the actions and the choices that he makes throughout the course of the movies that he's in in phase one, it's like, yeah, I get why you wanna take over planet earth. Like you feel jiped out of your like, you know, throne or whatever you are adopted. And like, then you basically watch your father wage a war against your own people or whatever. Like his motives make sense in the grand scheme of things, but at the same time, there's glimpses of hope and renewal for the character. I mean, at the same like, time, he's still just a spoiled kid that's causing yeah, a lot he's of still random a spoiled problems kid. just because he's spoiled. Yeah, he's still a spoiled kid with childhood trauma. He's internal. He's, it's definitely like a lot of it's just internalized trauma that yeah. like, I probably should have just like, I was, I did well. Like I was, I'm actually probably fine. It should be better adjusted than I am. <laughs> and you just sort of look at him and you want to fix them. Because you, yeah. He's well slap. thought out. <laughs> slap him and then fix him. <laughs> but in, in the grand scheme of things, he's very well thought out and very well acted and like 
it's very clear Tom Hiddleston put a lot of thought and effort into where he could go with the character and how he could best portray what Loki stands for. Chris, do you have a hot take or was yours also Loki? No, it's not Loki. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I guess in terms of phase one, he might be one of the better. I mean, Red Skull is really good. I Red Skull is actually, really good. Though. You know, I, I, I would say Red Skull. I, I wanted to throw Obadiah Stane in there, but that's just because I want to throw Jeff Bridges out there. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I think the Red Skull is is the best in phase one for in my opinion loki's loki's fine you know he's, he's a good character loki's but he's great but i mean but like okay. thinking of just as like as a villain it's like okay yes great <laughs> you know he's the type of villain i would be <laughs> you know i it's like i just, i'm just, i'm a villain because i just want to cause chaos and that's kind of what i get from loki um i mean yes yeah i believe and, that and, you know, like they're they're I fine they're they're fine you know it, it, it's a it's a fine trope but <laughs> I mean, that's just like your opinion man that's just like your opinion, <laughs> opinion man everyone's entitled to their own opinion <laughs> yeah using but... my jeff bridges against me out there. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> i love it love it <laughs> And then the final question I have for you is if you had to give a ranking to this phase, where would you rank it? Um, and then kind of where would your, like, if you had to rank it, would you be thinking average or are you thinking like gut feeling separate from the averages of the other films? So for me, I say all of this because to me, like this feels like an A like phase. Like there's so like, I feel like there's a lot here. But honestly, I watched Incredible Hulk today and I feel like that brings everything down. And yeah. so like, if I had to like put a letter grade on this, like this feels like a B to me. Um, like, and that's kind of where my average is. So like for me, I had an S, two A's, two B's, and then a D. So like, I feel like that averages out to like a low B, something like that. Don't math check me. Um, but I, I do feel like that's kind of the, the idea there. And um it's very interesting in hindsight to look at this phase. And I feel like a lot of people remember this very fondly. And then if you had to add them, like look back at the films, they'd be like, Oh yeah, that one. I mean, I, I think a lot of people don't have a complete understanding of the individual phases though, too. Yep. Yeah. Like what they're remembering is really just the starting movies. And yeah, this is a small phase. It's six movies and yeah, mm -hmm. it's not much to go off of. But given the fact that it is only six movies in the bigger picture, those six movies, well, five of those six movies are overall some of the stronger movies. Like even though there's some like low Bs and Cs and whatever, like there's definitely other phases that have felt weaker. Like I'm thinking like right now, even with, phase four overall a lot of the movies have felt more on the weaker side of things given what we've seen marvel what marvel can do with what they have material wise and resources wise so i definitely think it sits you know b like strong b in my opinion in the grand scheme of things especially since it does start off the entire MCU and essentially revolutionizes superhero movies and the way those can be done when it hadn't really been done before. Like they were, Marvel was paving a whole new path in the grand scheme of things. I think ultimately for this phase, there's really only two outliers. And that's 
the one that got grandfathered in as a phase movie. Um, really was. I mean, if you say that, like the sequel. this movie came out two years after Marvel had the rights to Hulk. Like, this was not just like, oh, this was going to be released. Like, they had two years to do with this movie yeah. what they wanted. I know, but it, it's also and chances are it, it, they it were was like about it. It was the the full concept for the MCU wasn't fully developed. You know, it wasn't developed in complete tandem with the idea of Iron Man. Um, or it certainly doesn't feel like it was. If 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 it was, then <laughs> it really should be a D because just just wipe it from the face yeah. of the earth because you did not succeed in any shape, form, or or whatever with that. If that yeah. was the intent, <laughs> you failed. Um, so I like I to mean, give the benefit of the doubt like... and just like we made a Hulk movie. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then just so happened that we started Cape. We kept that MC Marvel thing going, and now we have this whole thing happens to fit in this little piece this little pocket here we're, we're, we're gonna leave it there and if you care it's there um but you know i, I definitely say this is a solid like a phase you know it, it's the launching point i don't think i think it is in the grand context it is a there there's a lot of must watches here like you, yeah. you there's so much context set up in in the in the first Iron Man and Avengers and with like the introduction of Thor and and everything that you, you just to truly appreciate their characters throughout the rest, you should watch this and that makes it a solid A. Like like if if you're not a big super person hero person then yeah like you can start anywhere. Just watch the good ones, but <laughs> yeah. But for everyone else. Yeah, I just had to look at the other phases really quick because I am one of those people who has <laughs> no concept of what the phases actually are. But yeah, it's an A tier for me too. Comparing it to the other phases, there are some rough phases out there. Cough, phase two, cough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 you're coming from away from a hive after the Avengers. So, I mean, like, I'm going to give phase two some benefit of the doubt. <laughs> like, it's just like. It has some good things. <laughs> you said very confidently. <laughs> But you sure about that, Shanine? There's a couple. Um, but no. Phase one is A tier. It's not not the height of MCU, but it is it is good, solid MCU. In chat, Varoth makes a call out that says um, there was a big quantum leap forward in the origin story across this arc. Uh, and like this kind of ties in with my last question here, which is like, what if you had to like boil this down to one thing, boil down phase one to one thing, what would it be? And to me, it's the idea of origin. It's that idea of this is very much, I mean, both kind of, obviously we have to introduce the characters that we have, um, but then this is very much like setting that initial framework for how we're going to introduce new characters going forward. Like it's going to be quite a while before we get to see a big un introduction of characters that is not in a insert characters name here movie. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of those follow the format of these films. And so, and that idea of them figuring out what is that best way to tell that origin story. So, what do y'all think? What's the, what's the one big thing looking back on this phase that jumps out to you? I think just the kind of how I've been talking about, like the impact it's had on the, like the movie scene in terms of Marvel is really one of the first, if not the first studio to do such a huge connected universe in film that for the most part does such a good job of 
maintaining the world that it creates over tons of movies. Not just like, you know, you've got a three movie, you know, plot or whatever, like some, some series of five or six movies like Harry Potter or whatever. It's all these different main characters, all of these different, you know, whatever. And it, the phase one did, obviously it was the first phase, so they're still getting on their footing, but they did such a good job in the grand scheme of things of introducing that concept in a way that was like made sense. Like, oh yeah, you've got, you know, Aaron, you've got Tony Stark showing up at the end of Hulk to like be like, hey, look, there's, there's a cameo or whatever by, you know, Tony Stark. But then you've got, um, you know, Hawkeye showing up in Thor very briefly. And then you've got, you know, all of these characters that we've seen even just briefly show up in Avengers that it's like, wait, we know this person. And it, they, it did such a good job of slowly introducing what can be considered as such a scary concept for movies that aren't the same thing but are still connected and like making it work and being able to set up later movies for an audience that had never really seen something to that extent before. I think it really brought um, like Marvel and superheroes and comic book movies into popular culture. Like it, those things existed before, but they're, they were not as like integral to popular culture as they are now. Um, they made those stories more accessible to everyone um, rather than just like the niche comic book market. Mm -hmm. And I, I personally probably would not have gotten into comic books without these movies. I probably would not even be the geek that I am today without these movies. So What's the question again? <laughs> what if you had to boil this this phase down to one thing? What is the one thing that sticks out to you? Um, I have no idea. Because <laughs> over here, like I have seen these films. Yeah, that's what it boils down to for me. Right, <laughs> <laughs> they are indeed movies. They are, they are a tier movies, right? They are a tier that's, movies that's, that's, <laughs> overall. Overall, a tier. Um, and then last, a little bit of trivia for y'all. Um, it is estimated that phase one had a budget of one billion dollars. Um, how much money do you think this brought in at the box office across these six films? 3.6 billion dollars. 5 billion. You know, I have the Wikipedia open right now cuz I was looking at what movies were in the phase, so I cannot <laughs> guess. <laughs> okay. I appreciate your honesty and not being like, you know, I have a feeling it's 3.813 billion dollars. That is uh, what I was going to you guess know, though. That is what my <laughs> intuition was. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's very interesting that um, um, just to kind of see that and see that, that um, like, obviously, you know, you have to spend it's not enough to buy Twitter, the movie. Though, so, but yeah, no. but like that, <laughs> the, um, it's not the box office for Avengers is greater than the budget for the other, like all of the movies coming, like combined for this phase. Like, again, it just kind of hits on that same idea of how much of a phenomenon that film was. Yeah. And, um, and what we're going to get to see next week when we return 
Um, or maybe, you know, maybe not next week. We'll see. It's an indeterminate time period with the theme of Marvel. And so, but we will return. The rest of the um, year. <laughs> yeah, on, the, on our, um, on our post It's going to take us scene, a while, guys. First Geek 411 will return. <laughs> um, and we'll be talking about Phase 2, hopefully next week, um, and chatting through those six movies. And so some announcements before we go um any stream plans this week still figuring out my life same Ho- hopefully back sometime this week but tbd also there's a lot of pride events so i'll be being social i guess maybe we'll see yeah. more than likely and i work all day Thursday, but I am off tomorrow and Wednesday, so I might hop on maybe Wednesday ish for a little bit. But yeah. Um, for me, not 100% sure, but man, if someone wanted to play Fall Guys, I'm up for playing more Fall Guys. That's kind of where I'm living my life right now. Um, <laughs> and so, heard. <laughs> yes. It's uh, Chris looking at you. I know that you do love Fall Guys. Just the slime and, plan. Yeah. If I had to think of someone that I <laughs> that I think of when I think of competitive multiplayer games, it is definitely only you. Pokemon Unite. <laughs> and so, um, and then we are getting towards the end of the month, which means it is almost time for our book club on Secret Identity. That'll be on July twenty eighth, so a week and a half from now. Um, so make sure to tune back in, you know, try reading the book. Um, I say to myself as it's on my nightstand and I've read like three chapters or something, but same. Um, I've learned but... that my nightstand is not a place for books I want to read because <laughs> I don't read in bed. <laughs> Just... You know, you know, um, but yeah, so that is where, um, we'll be back. Um, like I said, hopefully next week with phase two of the MCU, as always, you can find us as One Geek 411 on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can join our Discord server if you want to chat or shoot us an email at 1stgeek411 at gmail.com. You can also check out our Redbubble store and watch live on Twitch Monday nights, 645 Mountain Time. Check out the videos over on our YouTube where you can like, comment, and subscribe. And then you can also check us out on our personal social medias. Mine is Humar Whittle. Mine is I am not prepared with an I. I'm the Hoot and Howl on Twitter and Hoot and Howl Tales, T A L E S, on Instagram. And I'm not so foreign. And it's been a great week. Read a book. Wash your hands. I love you. Okay. I will say I'm pretty.